Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Oda, Hank and George and the harbor master too. Theodore and Hank were bringing a cargo ship named Catherine into the big harbor. Theodore was the tug in charge. That meant he was up in front, leading the way and giving the orders. Theodore always felt important when he was the tug in charge. Theodore gave two stern blasts of his whistle to warn Hank he was about to start turning. Why, that is the cutest little whistle, said Catherine. My whistle isn't cute or little, said Theodore. My whistle is, is, uh, fresh, suggested Hank. It was the only word he could think of just then. Listen, Theodore, it's not like she was making fun of your size or anything. It was just a harmless compliment about your whistle. Relax, would you? But as said, Theodore is annoyed that he has a cute little whistle and believes an important tug and charge should have one that sounds more important. So he bustles about the harbor trying to make his whistle sound more important like the other tugs. His first attempt begins when he spots Emily moving a ship. That was Emily's whistle. Now to Theodore, Emily's whistle always sounded confident. It seemed to say, I'll handle this. Theodore wanted his own special whistle. He decided to make his whistle sound just like Emily's. Theodore blew and blew his whistle, trying to make it sound confident like Emily's. What do you think, he said. I think... You should go to the repair yards, she said. There may be something stuck in your smokestack. You sound like you have a marble wedged in there. Jeez. So after the first failed attempt, Theodore spies Fodok on his harbor safety patrol. To Theodore, Fodok's whistle sounded very serious. It said, I'm doing important things. Theodore decided that maybe his whistle should sound like Fodok's. Theodore blew and blew, trying to make his whistle sound serious and important. Bat! cried Fodok. It sounds like there's a giant bat in the harbor. I better warn everyone. Did he say my whistle sounded like a bat? frowned Theodore. How the hell does that even sound remotely close to a bat? As far as I'm aware, Bats don't make a groany horn sound, unless they have a serious problem. So with attempt number two failed, Theodore floats over to see Hank beginning to pull Bobby Barge. Now to Theodore, Hank's whistle sounded larger than life. I'm ready for anything, it seemed to say. And Theodore decided that maybe his whistle should sound more like Hank's. Hank, wait a minute, he called. Theodore blew, and he blew his whistle, trying to make it sound larger than life. Well, asked Theodore, what do you think of my new whistle? Is it bigger or, or just better? Hank looked blank. But then, seeing how discouraged Theodore looked, he said, it's bigger and better. It's bitter. Uh, no, it's butter. It, it's, uh, it sounds fresh. Okay, first... What the hell was even that sound? And two, Hank, you and your fresh. Make a note, guys. This is now and forever Hank's tagline. So, once again, Theodore moves along and sees George moving Owen the oil rig. Well, we've seen three failed whistle attempts so far. I wonder how this is going to turn out. To Theodore... George's whistle sounded big and brash and bold. It announced to all the world, make way for me. So Theodore decided to make his whistle sound just like George's. 
Theodore took his windiest breath, made his best whistling face, puckered his lips, and let out all his air with a great whoosh. The big harbor shook with the mighty sound of nothing. Not a sound, not a peep, not even a little bird's tweet. Theodore had worn out his whistle. Oh dear. I hate to say it, but you kind of did this to yourself, Theodore. If you didn't screw around with it in the first place, you might have been prepared for what was to happen next. Because later that day, the dispatcher announces that the Queen Stephanie is to make a special visit. He then asks the tugs one by one if they're all shipshape, and each of them blow their whistles. Everyone except for Theodore. Now, I'm going to let this entire scene play out, and you're about to see how quickly this scene gets really emotional. I, uh... I can't whistle, Theodore said in a voice the dispatcher could hardly hear. Well, the dispatcher said nothing for the longest moment. And then he turned so that only Theodore could hear. Theodore, tugs must have whistles if they want to work. No, I'm sorry, but I can't send you out with the other tugs to bring in the Queen Stephanie today. Well, Theodore knew the dispatcher was right, but it didn't make it any easier. He wanted to help bring in the Queen more than anything. The other tugboats set off to meet the Queen Stephanie. Soon a mighty horn was heard, echoing across the water. Theodore could see all the other tugs greeting the Queen without him. It all started because I didn't like my whistle, Theodore thought sadly. And now, I don't have any whistle at all. That definitely felt like a Thomas moment, didn't it? Now, some of you still might be thinking that Theodore kinda deserved this, but I still can't help but feel really sorry for him. I mean, if I missed my chance to bring in the Queen, I'd be pretty depressed too. But anyway... After the tugs bring the queen in, they head back to the dock all full of excitement. Of course, this makes Theodore feel even worse. So to cheer him up, Emily floats over and tells him that the queen was asking for him. What did she want? She asked me where you were, said Emily. She did, said Theodore. Yes, continued Emily. I think you should go over and say hello. Do you think it's okay, said Theodore. Sure, replied Emily. Even though you can't work without your whistle, you can still visit. A little later, Theodore set off to see the Queen Stephanie. It was dark by now. The harbor lights were winking all around him. Why was the Queen asking about me? Theodore wondered. The closer Theodore got to the Queen Stephanie, the louder his heart seemed to pound. He was sure the whole harbor could hear it. And then he saw her. Theodore couldn't help but gasp out loud. Oh, what a sight she was. Her lights reflected in the water, and she swayed slightly in the nighttime tide so that she seemed to be suspended in the sky itself. To Theodore, oh, she looked like a great floating palace. I'll say it once, and I'll say it again. The Queen really is a sight for sore eyes. She is just so beautiful to look at. So after Theodore arrives, he then begins to explain why he couldn't help bring Her Majesty in. You see, I wore out my whistle. Wore out your whistle, said the Queen. Oh, that really is too bad. Your whistle is so bright and cheerful, just like you are. It is, said Theodore. I mean, I am. I didn't think you even noticed my whistle. Oh, I most certainly do, said the Queen. Even when I can't see tugboats buttoned on way below me, I can always hear their whistles and tell exactly who they are by their sound. Oh, every tugboat has their own special whistle. Even me, 
said Theodore. Oh, I should say so, said the Queen brightly. Your whistle is the most special thing about you. My whistle, said Theodore. Of course, replied the Queen. Your whistle always makes me smile. Well, Theodore was silent. He was thinking about everything the Queen was saying. And somehow, just hearing her words made him feel much better about his whistle. This is the reason why I kind of view the Queen as a motherly figure to someone like Theodore. She always has just the right things to say, as she clearly demonstrated here. So with that, Theodore heads happily home, feeling much better about his whistle. It had seemed like a magical night, and he didn't want it to end just yet. The Queen Stephanie really was the nicest ship. It seemed she always knew just the right thing to say. Had she really said that his whistle was bright and cheerful and that it made her smile? I guess my whistle is special, Theodore thought. For the night was clear and starry, and there was a gentle tang of salt sea air in the breeze. And Theodore felt happy. Then softly, so softly, he took a breath and let out a small, sweet, wonderful whistle. His good old Theodore whistle. And he just had to smile. And that concludes Theodore's whistle. It was very nice to start off with such a calming episode. The story itself is good, although I do question why Theodore was automatically placed as Tug in charge. It just feels like a huge jump out of nowhere. And I guess one could say that it's kinda repetitive watching Theodore fail at changing his whistle, but if you look past all that, it's pretty decent for what it is. Now as for characters, I guess you could say that a lot of us have been in Theodore's position, where we question ourselves on what makes us so special. I know I've done that loads of times. For the rest, we now get to see the Queen Stephanie in her first major speaking role of the series, which is a breath of fresh air to see her again. Short appearances from the others like Hank, Emily, the Dispatcher, and so on. Cameo appearances like Bobby and Owen. Even a new look at Catherine. Now what I think makes this episode so unique is the music. It's relaxing, it's not over the top, it really helps carry out the emotion done in certain scenes. It's just perfect for this particular episode. And for visuals, before I forget, viewers are now looking at the newly updated models which are far better looking than the season 1 models. These look way more detailed, especially with the faces that are definitely far from an eyesore. Apart from that, the shots that definitely stole the show were the nighttime ones. Truly beautiful and amazing. If you're looking for a nice, calm, beautiful story, this is definitely the one to check out. Up next is George's Ghost. 